Hello everyone. Keyboard avoidings can be quite hard in React Native, and I want to share the way I handle keyboard avoidance. Uh, so I'm building this application for scheduling posts to multiple platforms. And a couple of days ago, I was struggling trying to implement this UI where you can select this input and then you have your account at the bottom and then you can select them to make a post. So this is the way it works. So by default, for example, if I hide this, but if I come back here, by default, it's going to focus the keyword the first time that the user comes to the screen and you can select the account and then hide the keyword, focus the input again. And it actually took me a couple hours to kind of develop a decent implementation that I was happy with. And I thought I need to share this with you guys. So this application is not open source yet, but if you want to get access to the source code, consider becoming a pro member at codebibet.dev. I'm gonna leave a link in the description in case you're interested. But here's basically what I'm doing. Here's an example, and this is like the final test. So I always like to test on an iPhone SE and see if that works. That means that it's going to work everywhere else. So if I go back to the view avoiding, the input is automatically focused, which is great. Um, and you know, I can you know do things, type around, and then close the keyword, and this is going to work just fine. And let me fix that alignment on Android by passing this text aligned to the top. And it works great on Android as well, as you can see here. I can come here and close that, focus the input again, press this toggle button, um, go back, then go back to the view avoiding, and the keyword is going to be, um, the input is going to be automatically focused, and everything works just great. If you want to move, for example, this view at the top, that's totally fine. It's going to keep working just fine because the way this, this approach works is by having a fake view. And I actually took this approach from the package that I want to recommend everyone to use, which is React Native Keyword Controller. This one right here, I'm using the latest version, 1.17 at the time that I'm, work, I'm recording this quick video. But anyways, the way this works is just by having this animated view at the bottom of my screen. And this view, what it's doing is just increasing its height based on the height of the keyword. So I'm passing this keyword padding, which is just the height of the keyword while the keyword is being presented. So when we focus the input, if you notice, the keyword has this animation, right? The keyword is coming from the bottom, meaning that the height is going to start at zero and then it's going to grow at the maximum of the current device. So we don't really know the current height, but we can actually calculate that using um, this hook that it's called use gradual animation, which is a hook that I created here. And it basically uses this hook use keyword handler from React Native Keyword Controller, which returns the height of the keyword at each frame. So using React Native Reanimated, we can grab the value of the height and put that in a shared value and then return that. Now, because I'm using as well the keyboard toolbar, I'm adding this offset of 42. So that's like on top of the height of the keyword, I'm increasing 42 pixels and you can play around with it actually depending on what you're doing. So you can actually decrease the size a little bit or increase the size a little bit to have more space depending on what you're trying to achieve. But anyways, this is all the magic. This is going to return from zero to the maximum height of the keyword. And then with this value, we can simply increase the height of this animated view using reanimated, and that is going to push the entire content up. And this is actually a pretty simple view, just a simple view with items, uh, nothing super fancy in the input, and a flex of one for the container. And that's basically it. Just to finish, I want to show you how this looks on the iPhone 16 Pro, pretty similar to what we have in the other devices. That's basically all I wanted to show you guys. I'm gonna leave the link to the source code down here. I hope this is helpful. And if you have a better approach, please share with me as well. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.